Introduction to Snowflake Before beginning to explore Cloud Data Warehouse, we need to talk about few things which is necessary to understand the data world. Database, Data Warehouse, and Data Lake. Database, relational database in this context, is a technology where it gives you the capability to store and retrieve the transactional data. They provide data storing objects such as tables, views, materialized views, and schema, and have ways to enforce relationship between the tables using constraints. It provides a simple query language called SQL or Structured Query Language. It gives procedural capability to write functions and store procedures to solve the business problems. It is transactional in nature, meaning that if you cancel any update to the data, it will revert back to its previous state. Database has a storage, a memory engine, and a processing engine. It is fast and it has a very high level of integrity because it enforces the integrity constraints. Also, it provide, provides high availability capabilities. Companies usually store their data relate, related to all aspects of their business functions in relational databases. Example, e-commerce data. So example of the database technologies are SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL. They are easy to manage. This, these are well established technology, easy to use, proven. But at times it becomes expensive when the data becomes large. It simply does not scale well for the large data sets or big data. It is mostly used for transactional and structured data. Let's take an example of a typical relational database model. Sales, customer, company, address, product, they're interlinked with the help of relations, relationship constraints. And database technologies use indexes to faster retrieve the data. So we join all these normalized tables to get the desired result sets. Data Warehouse. Data Warehouse is a technology where you store the historical data for processing and extracting meaningful and actionable insights out of the data. Data from all different databases or all from all different sources are loaded and processed into a data warehouse with the help of scheduled batch jobs. The loading process is called ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading. Extract, meaning ingest the data from all different sources into the stage. Transform, meaning process the data as per the business needs, and then load into the reporting tables. Traditionally, this was achieved by using stored procedures. Then over the time, several ETL vendors such as Informatica, etc. become very popular. And then engineers also started using scripting language such as Python to also load the source data and transform and load into the final data warehouse tables. S some companies uh, want to divide the subsets of the data into several data marts for the easier access and, and easier management. And often these tables are divided into facts and dimension, which we'll see at a later point of time. And then you build the aggregation layer where um, after the final table, based on the reporting requirements, you build several tables where the data analysts use these tables to build analytical reports using their visualization tools such as Looker or Tableau and executives use these reports to make important decisions for their business. 
This data warehouse also runs on databases most commonly popular companies such as Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, Teradata. They are also very easy to manage and they are very well established technology, easy to use, but it will become expensive when the data grows. And also it cannot manage and scale uh, at the big data scale of the modern world and it will not be able to process the unstructured data. So let's see a look into the data warehousing model. So this is a typical uh, data warehousing model where it is uh, divided into facts and dimension table. Fact uh, table is a kind of a summary table where it contains all the primary keys of the dimensions or the uh, measures. And these dimension tables are smaller tables which contains the lookup values where it is joined with the summary tables to get the aggregated or the summarized data. Data lake. So to un understand the need of the data lake, we have to understand the big data. So organizations wanted to read the customer's mind and to understand their needs. So for example, they want to store the click streams or the event data. Why? because they want to understand what the user is doing on the website, which navigation path the customer is, is using, which of their features the users are most likely uh, using it or liking the most. And also they want to process the data from IOTs. They want to process PDF files, image files to extract the data and uh, give the user experience. Uh, so because it becomes so the data becomes very com complex and also this data is very huge in millions and often billions this data can be in structured like in csv in semi structured like json or unstructured like image files so storing this data in a traditional database would incur a huge cost and won't be feasible for the organizations also, retrieving the data from such mammoth databases would be a nightmare for the engineers. This led to the, in, uh, to, to the invention of Hadoop distributed file system. So processing was done with the help of MapReduce and the storage was using the common machines and it scaled horizontally. Now, all kinds of data, be it structured, semi-structured or unstructured data, are ingested into one place. This place was called data lake. Pintaho termed this term data lake for this kind of store. Just like all the streams and rivers flow into uh, the lake, similarly all the data streams are flowing into this place is called data lake. Technologies kept evolving then companies also started introducing services where they provided the infrastructure for storage, computing and services layer. And cloud services providers also use the strategy of pay per use and they become more popular. So the examples of the data lake can be SDFS, Google Cloud Storage, Microsoft Azure Blob and Amazon S3. But one thing, it does not solve all the problems. Rather, it gives rise to more problems. I agree that uh, it is now easy to ingest or insert huge amount of data into a cheaper storage. But how to retrieve the data? How does it require uh, expensive compute, meaning processing power? Is it fast enough? It requires dealing with sophisticated technologies, for example, consume from Kafka streaming channels and transform and process and implement the business logic using uh, distributed computing technologies such as Spark. And then to retrieve the data, you need to write APIs and application interfaces. Not easy. It requires highly skilled engineers to write complex code to develop data pipelines. So uh, enterprise did, uh, need a data warehousing solution which needs a easy to use interface, 
which has faster retrieving capabilities like a database it can handle the big data made paper use scale up or down based on the demand it should be self-managed and no maintenance requirements like a self-managed service like in cloud service providers